Building a data analyst portfolio is a challenging task. Deciding where and how to showcase your work is even more challenging. In my latest video, I spoke to Judith Becker. She walked me through a brand new portfolio that she just launched a month ago. It is absolutely beautiful. And what we did in the hour that we had to speak to each other is we broke down the process that she went through to set it up, build it, how she wanted to make sure that her identity was conveyed through her work, and some conscious decisions she took about Tableau Public, but also other platforms, and how she curated what's on her current portfolio. We broke it all down and we talked a lot more than just Tableau. We also touched on Google Looker and some other technologies. And I just have to say, the discussion with her was just really interesting and creative. She just had some really interesting ideas about approaching work and analytics in general. So it's one of the most interesting discussions I've had in a while. So go ahead and check it out. And as ever, get stuck in. Judith, how are you doing? Oh, good, thank you. It's good to be here. Yeah, we've we've fought some uh, technical issues for the last 10 minutes, and we've also been fighting diaries for the last uh, couple of weeks as well. <laughs> so I really appreciate you sort of joining joining me and, um, uh, yeah, being, being able to talk a little bit about your work, your past and everything uh, that we're going to touch on today. Um, I guess as an introduction, let's start with who are you, what do you do, and maybe we'll come on to Tablet in a bit. So over to you. Uh, yeah, uh, everything goes down to Tableau, I guess. Uh, <laughs> so yeah. uh, I currently work as a senior data analyst at a, at a German startup uh, that deals with uh, painful taxation issues uh, right. here in the German uh, bureaucracy and <laughs> a couple of other countries. Uh, and I've been doing this like, it feels like forever. Uh, I've been in this startup scene for seven, six years now. Right. Um, from mobile development to taxation, and um, uh, I'm mainly focused on still reporting. I wouldn't call it data visualization. Right. I don't think it is. <laughs> um, we'll come back to yeah. that. Uh, mainly I'm a data analyst and I, I, I was always one, like maybe I started out as a data analyst working in Excel and PPT mm -hmm. and it evolved from there. It's an evolution. Right. And then in terms of like, when did you discover Tableau? I always like to ask, what was your first version of Tableau? I don't remember the version number, but I do remember when it was, uh, okay. it was in, uh, 2016, 2016. Uh, well, I'll find the version. I'll put it on screen. Some point in 2016. So there would have been like a, it would have been 2016 dot something because back then they did use the years, right? So um, fairly recent, but yeah, like that's quite nearly a decade, right? We're nearly nearly a decade into using Tableau. That's pretty it's incredible. <laughs> yeah, and uh, and it was incredible back then for me. Like uh, I was doing really amazing stuff in terms yeah. of work like i was working in the fmcg industry and uh, yeah, yeah. analyzing biscuit opportunities like really really love brands uh, on yeah. the market yeah. but i was struggling to um to communicate these efficiently so i was like it can be just excellent ppt there must be something out there uh, yeah. and i started discovering uh, tableau and sql and uh, power bi and infographics mm -hmm. and uh, i was a bit clueless so i learned everything that was available available back, back then but uh, i think tableau was my favorite and uh, it remains so <laughs> Good, good. It's 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 always interesting because I've I've worked in F, uh, fast moving consumer goods. For anyone who's not familiar with yep. the acronym, it's uh, it's an acronym we use a lot in the industry, right? Um, that I'll be honest, I share that passion with promotional analysis and all the stuff that goes on in there. That 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 part of the analytics industry is super exciting to me because for me, it's one of the few industries where you are you are measuring. Um, something tangible because you can go to the shop and actually see the thing that you're working on and pick it up off the shelf and yeah, be part exactly. of that. Everything else feels like so distant when you do analysis on it, right? Even like banking and finance, it, it's you're, you're analyzing someone else's products, but when it's, you know, biscuits or you know food or stuff that you buy personal care brands, it's just so different and you, you get really passionate about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> and, it, and it's a super, um, 
I think you learn a lot about the way uh, not just brands work, but I think you learn a lot about the way companies work and how they handle brands. Because I think sometimes we have this, um, I'll call it fairy tale understanding of brands that people just love them and therefore they just you know buy these stuff. But when you work inside of the company and you see the mechanics and the tricks and the, all the sort of devices they use to sort of not not manage behavior, but to get you to do something like buy more products or spend more money, you start to have a different sort of perspective on what a brand is, right? Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's a it's a it's a good it's a good segue to I think talking about. Uh, your work. Um, you've been using Tableau for some time. And I think before we get into sort of your portfolio and building your portfolio, which which I think is like you know, the reason I wanted to talk to you, how have you found learning Tableau over those years? Was it something that you could, you know, very easily pick up? Or was it something where there was a moment where something sparked and you suddenly understood the product a lot more? So I think uh, Tableau has a really, really steep uh, learning curve. Uh, it's really easy to uh, get a sufficient amount of knowledge in a short amount of time, mm -hmm. but then it gets uh, a bit harder. And uh, I don't think I've uh, reached the level of, uh, I don't know, the Flurlich twins uh, <laughs> or of, like, yeah. Uh, and and uh, maybe I don't even want to, like, uh, I, I yeah, know how to uh, solve problems. I know how to search for them. What I, mm -hmm. I, I think that's, that's the, the key to, Mastering Tableau is to know the search terms uh, you need Correct. to search for. Yeah, no, you know, I have to, I have this discussion with um, Tableau product developers. The, the simple thing I tell them is, how does someone know to search for level of detail calculations? It's not a word you've ever used. Like, the product doesn't tell you that that's what you need, but you're sat there trying to build this table in Tableau, and you're using filters to kind of get the answer. Then you add something else and the filters don't work. And then you're like, oh, maybe you start messing around with context filters, but whatever. But really, the product needs to tell you, it looks like you need a level of detail calculation. <laughs> and it's not until you go to Ken's blog and you start reading about this example, you go to the forums, and then the one word, our oh, level of detail calculation, you're like, oh, I've never heard of that. Then you Google it. Three weeks later, you finally understand it. But by then, you know, you need to do your job right. So it's a very hard problem to solve. Yeah, I, I wish like I, I was working with a lot of BI tools uh, and I just wish they would use the same words for the same things. Like, can yes. it be window calculations uh, everywhere yeah. or? Yeah, like... yeah, yeah, yeah. It's very true. Um, Tableau takes its terminology partly from the database world, but I also know that in more recent years, the way they call their features is very confusing. So for example, the term extensions is used in so many different contexts, where you have viz extension, dashboard extensions, analytic extensions, uh, table extensions, right? And in a previous podcast, I talked to Ravi and he didn't know what a table extension was. And he thought it was something that made tables more interesting to use inside of the product, like visually. <laughs> And in actual fact, it wasn't. It's something completely different. It's to do with the way you connect to the data and you're able to run specific types of queries on, on the table, right? And it was it was super interesting to, to hear that. And I think you've touched on you touched on an absolutely sort of salient point, which is if you're using, let's say, Power BI, Excel, or whatever, they all have subtly different naming for the same function or subtly different connotations for the same capability. Yeah, well, even for like uh, really basic things, like in Tableau, you make a view. In yeah. Looker, you make a look. In Metabase, you <laughs> create a question. Yeah. And it's really, really like disturbing to, to, to know these words and like use the wrong ones. And you know it should be that, like yeah. it should be a chart or a yeah. view or like a tab, but yeah. it's a question or a look. <laughs> I I have not had to use Looker too much. I've come across it in my sort of consulting world and I've I've tried desperately. I don't know if you ever get this where I I mean I'll be honest, I'll put my hand up. I do this with Power BI as well where I have to do something with a tool, but the way I approach it is I want to know as little as I can possibly know because I don't want to get drawn into that world, right? I just want to I'm good at Tableau. I'm happy with Tableau. 
I've seen Power BI, I've seen Lucky, and I think, ah, oh, this is breaking my brain. So I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna do as little as I can and just like stop right there. <laughs> uh, yeah, uh, that would be uh, my take as well. But sometimes I can't do it. You can't like, do that. Um, yeah, yeah. For I example, currently I'm working uh, in Looker, and yeah. uh, since I'm working with Looker, I learned to really, really appreciate Tableau. Right. <laughs> uh, more than ever, I guess. So right. what I think uh, the biggest challenge for me is that I always work with tools that I felt like uh, I am the limit and not the tool. Uh, right. And now I am hitting walls every day. Like I have these great ideas. I will make it work. That would look good. And yeah. no, you can't right. do it. It's not right. possible. Okay. <laughs> so. And I think that's... I don't want to sound like a Tableau fanboy, but that is genuinely something that Tableau is actually recognized for. Even Power BI's users will say that Tableau has more finesse around design and control. I also, on YouTube, criticize a lot about Tableau's design and control. In fact, my last video was about how annoying design and formatting <laughs> is. So on one hand, here I am saying, yes, Tableau is great. But I think we have very high standards, really yeah. high creative standards because of some of the things we've seen people do with Tableau. And because someone has achieved that, I'd like to think you're part of that narrative as well. Like you've achieved some really beautiful work with Tableau and everyone wants that beauty to be easier to attain, right? And so that that has raised the the standard of sort of what we expect, which then means when you go to look and you can't even get close to that, you find it yeah. super frustrating, right? Yeah, so... <laughs> <laughs> I guess that gives context to that. Um, but yeah, go, going going back to, you know, maybe just briefly touching on the other tools you use, and then we'll go into like your work and, and, and the portfolio. In your, in your sort of view, you're obviously having to use lots of different tools. How do you see the landscape evolving around tools? Because there is, there is this, I'm going to call it sentiment that you know, Tableau is dying. That's a very extreme version, but there is this sentiment that people are moving away from Tableau. Maybe that's a fairer thing to say for lots of good reasons. Sometimes it's price. Sometimes a company is more connected to the Microsoft architecture. So they want something that's, you know, more closer to that. Sometimes tools like Google Looker, although their visualization tools aren't as good, they do have some other capabilities that are very good compared to what Tableau has with Salesforce. So I, I'd love to get your read and, you know, what you've seen. I, I'm not asking you to sort of be a prophet, just sort of saying, how do you see things sort of in your world and how how, how does that impact the way you think about the field? Yeah, I, I think it's a really good question. Uh, like uh, when I started with Tableau, uh, like there was only a, a handful of people uh, working in this, like yeah. even in Hungary, like we were like really a handful. Yeah. Uh, and there was a huge demand on the market uh, mm -hmm. for, for Tableau people. There were positions on LinkedIn popping up every day a couple of years ago that uh, companies right. are looking for data visualization designers, right. not like data visualization developers, designers. Mm -hmm. And uh, money was just pouring into this industry. And right. I think it changed drastically. So mm -hmm. what I see now is uh, no data visualization expert uh, positions here, yeah. at least. Mm -hmm. uh, I see data analysts focused on reporting, but everyone should do like more than uh, a BI developer uh, would do. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's not like people are looking for uh, Tableau developers. You get what you get. Uh, yeah, and yeah. I think people... uh, you have to use, get used to it. Yeah, people are more agnostic, right? So because companies don't want to be wedded to particular platforms, yeah, they're saying, uh, you know, uh, re reporting specialists, data visualization specialists must be able to use Power BI, Tableau, and SQL. Like they kind of bung everything in. The reality is if, you, if you're good at all five of those, you're not good at any one, right? Like, <laughs> like you're, yeah. you're kind of a generalist at all of them. And so... Um, there are a lot of enterprising individuals though who are point out who are like you say very good at finding the answers and so that's the approach that's actually the fastest way to learn it's not by not necessarily going on a course and you know doing all these certifications it's actually 
when you get into business and you do the things that people ask you to do, those are always very weird things to do. They're not, they're not superstore sales. They're not like clean data sets. They're messy. Yeah. Um, and I, I also think just to add to what you said, there is a, the skills are moving further back in the stack. So whereas a lot of the effort used to be focused on the visualization, now I think you're seeing more and more skills focused on modeling in those platforms. It's not just that you're a data analyst or whatever. I think yeah. you're having to use more SQL, you're having to use more Python, you're having to potentially become a little bit of a data engineer or a data architect yeah. in order to support the reporting. That's a standard expectation, yeah. Even like uh, these new positions coming up, like, uh, okay, we don't really have data visualization experts as a title anymore, but yeah. like the number of analytics engineers uh, companies are hiring, uh, like it's it's booming, I think. That's, yeah. that's the thing now. I will, I will push back on analytics engineering in general, and I know I'm going to get a lot of critique for saying this, <laughs> but the the thing I've always found is that Analyst engineers are extremely good at building models, extremely good at building architectures, let's say. They're very good at building the pipelines. But when it comes to interacting with business, and I go back to fast-moving consumer goods, you know this ecosystem very well, so we can talk about this. The data and the things that people do in business are never as clean as the architectures and the pipelines that you design. So there then always ends up being a need to do some what I call last mile data work. Like that means creating yeah. aggregations in Tableau, creating some really obscure lookup function inside a Tableau. And the thing I always get back from data engineers is, no, 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 don't do it in Tableau. Um, you should let me know what that is and let's push it back into the data model. And I'll say, okay, cool. H how long does that take? Yeah, give me two weeks. Uh, no, sorry. The promotion's finished in two <laughs> weeks, right? <laughs> like, yeah. you know, the promotion's done in two weeks. I need the answer now, right? And so uh, I've heard someone in Tableau describe it as communism for data sources, right? That's sort of the data <laughs> engineering approach, which is like, let's, let, let's just create everything for everyone and do it centrally. But sometimes it doesn't reflect the reality of how fast some things go in businesses. And I, I, I don't disagree with that philosophy of moving as much as you can further back it improves performance it can improve the way things work and that data is more visible to other architectures and systems within the business if it's in the database right it's not just in tableau but when you're building end user functionality where people need to answer questions quickly there are just some things you can't do easily quickly yeah. and tableau gives you those tools and power bi and these tools give you the ability to just solve that problem so Anyway, that's my two cents. I can't wait for the comments to to light up. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, um, let's go. Let's talk about your 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 work then, because you know I saw your you did a you did a website redesign, right? And I was uh, I was blown away because I felt like I do have familiarity with your work, if that makes sense. And I felt like I've seen your visualizations multiple times. And I'm, I always spend time looking at beautiful visualizations. The context of this is I, I lost a bit of passion for design in Tableau about five years ago because I just felt like it's making me work so hard to get there. And I'm a design, like, really centric person. I've always had a passion for design. I edit videos. I make content. Like, of course, I'm into design. But I lost that passion in Tableau. So I've lived through other people, people like yourself. Uh, I look sometimes at Ellen Blackburn. I look at um, individuals like, you know, Tristan and some of the stuff he's done in the past. So many, so many uh, incredible people. And what I was amazed by your portfolio is you managed to show me a new side of your work that I, I don't feel like I'd seen because you'd curated it in a really nice sort of presentable way. So the first question I, I sort of wanted to ask you about the website is what what prompted you to sort of build a new website and like how did you go through the process of deciding what aspects of your work it would show people mm -hmm. um so i i had a website since uh 2017 i guess but yeah. it was like an old wordpress uh, website it was yeah. okay uh, but it was like mainly a blog and yeah back then like i was trying out power bi illustrator uh, flourish uh, tableau and there was no way to have everything at the same place and yeah. I was still a junior so I wanted to like showcase somehow my portfolio yeah. so mm -hmm. what I did is like I wrote a 
blog post, I posted a picture of uh, what I did in like whatever Tableau or Power BI and like two sentences like, hey, this is what I did last week. Uh, yeah. Here's the picture and the interactive link to that. Right. And um, I just didn't want to delete these. Uh, right. I'm not ashamed of this, but I right. wanted to make it a bit more uh, professional um, mm -hmm. in terms of how it looks, how easy it is to maintain and like move away from like uh, everything as a blog post and only keep those that would worth keeping and yeah. focus on uh, like really a portfolio. Um, to showcase my work, I, I don't want to be a freelancer or or anything. Um, right. I'm I'm good being an employee, yeah. uh, but it's really really much much easier to to get a job when you can like say that hey here's a link this is my portfolio and then like maybe you don't have to do like a hundredth uh, Tableau dashboard for an interview because. Yeah. <laughs> You've done a bit of work already, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it's it's interesting you say that because I, I think Tableau would say, oh, but we have Tableau Public, right? And Tableau Public does kind of give you an opportunity to to put all your work. And and so is there is there something that Tableau Public wasn't giving you as a as a way of showcasing stuff that your website does? Yeah. Uh, definitely. Uh, and I, I know something has just came out about mm -hmm. reorganizing all the yeah. things, but um, mm -hmm. like I, I wanted to organize my things better. Like maybe n don't put the latest work uh, on the top, uh, maybe the ones I'm most proud of or, yes. or uh, what like... Uh, goes together or like a series of work uh, I did yeah. some sort of things and mm -hmm. how I did it before is that I edited the viz and mm -hmm. then I saved it again and this is how I could change the order uh, of oh, my tableau I vizes see. wow so you <laughs> so, yeah I made a that list hardcore, on yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah which ones should I edit and save first in order in order. to get the right order uh so that is that, that is that's <laughs> blown my mind because i'm just like <laughs> wait a minute yes that is exactly how you do it but then it it kind of highlights the importance of of what you've just said which is it's kind of partly first impressions and someone's browsing a portfolio the thing that hits them first is like is is you want it to be your best work. So it makes total sense. Your most recent work is not always necessarily yeah. your, your 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 best work because the point of public is you try in different things, right? So you could have tried something and you weren't happy with it. But the like the thing you want to go to an interview with is from a year ago and it's still some of the best work. I like to think some of my best work was in my first four or five years with Tableau, right? Like today, the stuff I do with Tableau is very, let's say, consultant driven, like very clinical, very like, is it supportable, maintainable? Like, can I document it? Very boring things. Not very sort of interesting for a portfolio. But yeah, it's a oh, man. Yeah, yeah I, that's I so think good. it's yeah. about uh, what you want other people to see from you at first. Like, for yeah. example, if I would sort my visits in terms of like popularity, my number one dashboard would be uh, a chart navigator, um, <laughs> which is like I did it for work and then I figured, OK, I, I will just upload it because it's like done. But that's not me. Uh, that was like an opportunity to take and yeah. people like it, but it's not me. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's a very fair point. Like what other people, um, you know, what other people know you for, what people sort of choose to look at them most for isn't exactly a representation of um not necessarily just you but it's also like the the work you do and the work you represent right like you're not a chart selector you you work you've worked in so many more interest interesting industries and you have a more sort of richer story around your work as well which i, I think is super super cool so um the other thing I, I was going to ask then is like i know looking at your tableau public and then looking at your web portfolio there is a difference in the amount of stuff that you've shown. And I think maybe it speaks a bit to what you've just said, which is what do you want to put best forward? But how do you, how did you decide which visualizations made the cut for your website versus which ones, um, you know, we're going to just stay on Tableau public. And, and I also get the impression that 
everything that's on Tableau Public, you've also maybe curated that as well. Uh, so two questions there. I'll, I'll let you sort of answer that. <laughs> um. I think I chose the voices that that are are closest uh, to me, and yeah. uh, that can be like because of multiple reasons. Like uh, number one, because I like the topic, uh, I tend to choose really really niche topics, but yeah. then I spend so much time on it that like I just cannot not love them. Uh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah. <laughs> And uh, then there are some that I, I'm proud of because of how complex uh, it was to build them. And there are some cases in there that I like I built in like four hours and I think it was a, a nice design. I just right. had an idea and I think yeah. it was unique and I managed to pull it off, but it required like what half a day of work. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And there were others that I worked on for months. Yeah, so. that is a story, right? Like, unfortunately, you don't you don't see that when people publish these visits. Some of them are laborers of love. They are ideas you've had for a long time, ideas you've had for a short time. But maybe a feature has just come out that makes them easy to do. Yeah, yeah right. Uh, or you tried it once, it didn't work. You tried it again, it did better. But then someone like Ken has posted something that shows you how to do something. You're like, that's the piece I was missing. I need that. And then you bring it in. Now the viz is ready to go. It's like art, right? Like everyone yeah. has a piece that isn't ready or need to re needs finishing or something like that. Yeah. And I also think that like uh, I, I had to create uh, mm -hmm. a, a curated version of my portfolio because I, 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 I made a lot of stuff over the years. Like I, I uh, collected all my visits that I made over the past, I don't know how many years, and it's more than a hundred. Mm -hmm. And not all all of them are good. And uh, like people, I think, would get overwhelmed uh, <laughs> if I would select like uh, 70 fair. of that yeah. hundred. So yeah. I wanted to uh, showcase a wide range of things I could do, yeah. uh, but still make it a bit compact. Good. I am, I am um, for your context, because you're probably looking at me going, why is he not like... Uh, looking at the camera, I am moving <laughs> you to a second screen so that I can screen share with you and also look at <laughs> look at the screen at the same time. Um, so I, I, I'm conscious when you do these interviews, it's not always obvious what someone's looking at. So let me. What I'm going to do is I'm going to share my screen. And I'm going to just bring up your website and then we can mm -hmm. talk a bit about okay. it. And then I think it'll be. I think it's just uh, like the reason I wanted to do this is because I think you nailed the balance between putting your best foot forward, expressing who you are as an individual, and then giving people a way to engage with your work, whether it's social, reaching out to you, or using the visualizations and getting to know them a bit better, right? And too often, I think the solution that people have is, oh, I need to express my work. Let me start a blog. Let me, let me, let me go through these sort of very mechanical things. But everyone does that, and there's no sort of personality. There's no individuality to it and i think you've expressed that really really well so um let me um let me share the screen and then we can you can guide me through your website as it were so um you could be <laughs> okay. a, a tour guide as it were uh, hold on let's see if it will let me even do this there yeah, this is your website I, I love it um number one i love the illustration did you do that or did you get did you get no, someone to do that like that was that that was um, a happy accident. Um, okay. I I was thinking about like I don't have any good pictures. I don't want my picture taken, but I still like it to look really really on brand with the colors. And any right. picture I would use here would ruin uh, what I want. Uh, right. And I was like, I I went on Etsy and I saw this girl doing uh, portraits based on pictures for. 15 euros and i wow. was like okay i'm gonna spend these 15 euros like what that's it's like a meal for lunch that's like coffee and, in london yeah <laughs> yeah and see what comes out of it and uh, just don't get my expectations high yeah uh and this cost uh, 15 euros so that's remarkable I'm, that's yeah, so I'm good amazed. that is so good <laughs> That is so good. And it's better than something that AI would do as well, because AI has this like really weird habit of, 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 um, 
I've just there's there's something subtle about it that isn't quite right, right? And you know, I've I I was in a real hype train with AI, and now I've sort of completely fallen off a cliff with it. I'm not a <laughs> not a huge fan of some of the AI creations that are happening, and it, I'm partly to blame because I think when AI came out, I was also quite excited about it in the context of Tableau, and now that it's here and Tableau doing stuff with it, kind of like eh. anyway, um, it's a really good thing you did there because you kind of invested a little bit in um that first impression as well right like and it need it, it matches the brand it matches the colors i guess that was easy for the, the the creator to do um but it's also you it's very clearly you it's not like some sort of um you know fake image or something like that which is great um yeah so this is still like a solution that i i i didn't build by hand uh mm -hmm. so i just uh, migrated uh, my content and to be honest it was it, it it was a couple of minutes and everything all my blog posts were there in some sort of format right. yeah. um so i could have kept uh, all of them and uh, then just uh, make a couple of edits um, mm -hmm. i just decided to delete everything and not do that uh because i <laughs> I, right. I wanted to to make it more organized because i was just throwing pictures uh into one folder and there yeah. were pictures i uploaded uh, five times and i didn't uh, know which one of those five i really used so yeah. I, I wanted to get a bit more organized, more organized behind the scenes. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. So what I wanted to do is like have a short introduction and then mm -hmm. a portfolio section uh, uh, under that. And uh, if, uh, if I hover over uh, the little pictures, there is a small description uh, in the portfolio section uh, about... Uh, the oh, visits yeah. themselves and you can open it. I wanted to uh, embed the interactive versions, uh, but I didn't succeed. I was like, okay, maybe I will figure it out uh, in a couple of months uh, until yeah, then yeah. it's good. And all of them has like this small portfolio page, uh, which I think is nice with all the links to the data sources and uh, the interactive versions uh, when I have those, the blog posts, um, and then basically like all the pictures uh, that are connected to to this project that I that I uploaded. So I think it's a it's a really nice uh, way uh, to visualize uh, uh, a portfolio. I still have challenges because uh, it's not super flexible to edit this uh, section, but mm -hmm. uh, but it's still a, a really really nice one compared to to what I used before. So. Yeah. I think there's a lot of thought that has gone into even just this because it, it it's the thing you the thing you say is actually quite important like getting a visualization to sit on a web page nicely is actually quite hard um it's not easy because you design the visualization to match the proportions that work for it and then when you come to a web page you've got this like 16 by 9 right and then really you don't use all of it you just have this sort of central column that you have to use and that is typically only like 60 percent of the screen real estate so you you have this really tough challenge of well i could just let people look at the visualization but also this is not the best place to do that and so what i like you've done is that you've pulled out what is worth communicating about that visualization right because at the end of the day someone who's looking at this and you know looking at this as your portfolio is just really interested in the visualization, how it came to be, the data, and sort of what you want to communicate about the visualization that makes a good piece of work. If they want to go look at the work, I think as you've done here, you can go click on it and you can link it. But you don't yeah. you don't always need to actually have the visualization on your portfolio. You can just pull out the things that are good about it. And I think that's what you've done here nicely. You've taken this map, you sort of pulled out the individual pieces, you've given people those you know, large capabilities. And the great thing about this is it works 100% of the time. Tableau Public doesn't always work 100% of the time on your phone or something else, right? These images scale very nicely as well. Um, and yeah, you've, you've, treat, you've treated it more as a gallery rather than like as this sort of, um, you know, uh, embedding 
use case, right? Which is kind of what it would be if you were embedding the visualizations. It would become like a an embedding, personally, I'd call it an embedding nightmare because embedding visualizations is just not a consistent experience across all browsers, across all things. Yeah. Images are, yeah. What I was really surprised to see is like, uh, and when it comes to my design as well, so I never <laughs> design for mobile. And right. I remember that whenever I uh, upload anything to Tableau Public, I needed to turn off the, the mobile, um, yeah, the mobile because <laughs> everything would like would go look tall, really yeah. really awkward. Yeah. And uh, in my previous uh, blog, I didn't see statistics about uh, how many people open my website from a mobile device, but now right. I do, and right. I was surprised to see that it's like more than forty percent. Yeah. Like it's yeah. it's really a lot. Yeah, no, it is, it is. And mobile devices also include things like tablets as well. So I'd probably say of that forty percent, ninety percent is like a phone, ten percent like ten yeah. percent of that forty percent is like a, a thing. So it is it is super interesting. I have had this theory for quite some time. You know, on Twitter and on LinkedIn, when someone mm -hmm. shares a link to visualization. I've had this theory for a long time that when you see the reactions, you can't see reactions much anymore on, on, on X. But back in the day, you'd see these like Twitter posts with like 300 likes. And I would look, I would look at my own statistics <laughs> and I'd be like, wait a minute, like 300 people have liked this, but only 10 have actually clicked the link. Like, <laughs> like what is going on here? Right. And then of all those 10 people on their own mobile, they'd go through and you'd see that. And then, you know, You've got a blog now, you, you see the analytics. Uh, when I make videos, I see the analytics there. Like, yeah, 40 to 50% of the way people interact with stuff is through mobile. So this solution, like if I clicked on this and mobile, um, this, this solution you have works because you've not tried to do this thing where you've gone for like the additional hard work of also designing your dashboards for uh, mobile, which if I'm honest, some of the layouts you have in your visualizations would never work on mobile. It's just, no. it's, a, it's a completely different format. They were not designed for that format. These are um, not to sort of speak on your behalf here, but a, lo a lot, the way I think of a lot of your work is they are posters, right? They are big things. They're, they're supposed to have space, not be confined to something small. Yeah, maybe one day I will configure something just for mobile, but uh, I, I, I don't have it in the books yet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, in the future, in the future. I think Tablet maybe. could make it easier, for, for example. And the simplest way they could make it easier is by changing the layout system in Tableau. So you could have what you have in web design, which are breakpoints, right? So in web design, you have breakpoints, which means yeah. when it sees a screen that's too small, the content just flows. I think even with this web page, if I was to sort of come out of this full screen and I was just to, you know, start doing this um, and then refresh the page. Uh, oh no, because I'm zoomed in, I'm zoomed in, sorry. <laughs> I'm zoomed in, so that's not gonna work. But what I mean is if I loaded this on a mobile, mobile device the breakpoint for the device when i load yeah. the screen would tell it to go oh i'm narrow and it would naturally flow that doesn't happen with tableau content there's yeah there's even a separate like mobile layout that i designed uh mm -hmm. for for this website but yeah it has like a minimum weight uh width yeah. uh, when it switches yeah. to to the mobile view yeah so yeah. yeah yeah so i really like this and the the i i think I think is this this um I think this piece over here this fire walk with me is is also featured on your tablet public profile. Mm -hmm. And I guess what I was going to ask you is uh on your tablet pub public profile did you use any of the data that you get there about like what people are looking at what people have starred to inform sort of what you put here? Uh no. Um okay. like uh, I mean I, I care, but at the same time, I, I don't. Uh, good. All right. <laughs> like, no, it's, it's good. You have, you, have a, you, you have an opinion about what matters for your portfolio, which is, which is rare, because a lot of people would just default to that, you know, most viewed, most popular, whatever. I think that I make the mistake of doing that all the time. So, yeah. No, for me, it's like uh, what I like uh, the best 
or like uh, maybe that was that famous composer's uh, piece that I don't like that much, but it was so nice that it's so long. I never did a long whiz, so I was like, okay, I'm putting it here. <laughs> you gave it the space. Uh, yeah. And it's good. I think it works for the format because uh, pianos are very wide things, right? And then you've got this nice contrast with a very long visualization. So it, I think it works. Uh, it's really good. I do love I do love I just do love how like you've um you've sort of put things together. I I spent about 15 minutes just kind of really engaging with with the website and kind of I think there's a story in each of these that you can take to and you can kind of go and explore and again if you go if you go to the interactive version of course you go to Tableau Public but then I think here and I think this sort of exemplifies the problem my Tableau Public is zoomed in beyond 100%. Um Tableau Public has this problem where it tries to contain the visualization a little bit. Um, what would be nice, I think, for Tableau to consider is if there was a way to share to the full screen experience, but mm -hmm. from your blog, so that if you clicked on the image, yeah. it just immediately opened this, right? Because this, this I can interact with, right? This is a visualization I can use. And then I think it's a little bit better than, you know, landing on this page you have this salesforce banner number one not everyone wants a salesforce banner on their work <laughs> i think it's possible uh, like uh, you just have to uh you just have to edit uh, the link itself the url how, yeah, yeah the url yeah yeah the oh yeah, you, just, yeah there's a url parameter bother. isn't there so like um yeah. no it's not about bothering i think it's uh, what i'm saying is it should be a default right like yeah. you should just when you go to share here it's not here right so you can't like this is the embed code this is the link it should have an option here which is link directly to full screen experience that's all it is right because who who's gonna who's gonna like who's gonna google the url parameter <laughs> encoding for tableau public links i don't think anyone even thinks to, to to google that i haven't um i know it exists for tableau server so this this information here so origin Viz equals share link, count equals no, just um, all of this stuff is what you can edit. Language is English. Okay, great. Um, <laughs> there's lots of lots of weird information in yeah, that URL. Yeah, I think yeah. there was a time when like uh, I was like, why can't Tableau have like uh, more font types or why can it do this or that? Oh, but yeah. then like... Uh, the more I, I I work in report and basically Tableau is a reporting tool like that's the Correct. primary function not, not that like uh, I don't know uh, what we are doing on Tableau public like yeah. uh, this mental yeah. masturbation stuff yeah. and uh, and like it it's it's I feel like it's so nice uh, that there are so many options in Tableau there are a lot of competitors on the market where you can't even try out that tool so yeah. how can you just gain experience there's no yeah. looker public uh, yeah. so i think i i still have a couple of things that i don't understand from my perspective it would be so easy to do like it's such a minor thing and it would have such a big effect but then I don't know. I think uh, after all these years, I just uh, learned to be grateful for the things <laughs> that have offers. They beat you into submission with their with their with their features, right? Um, yeah. and I, I don't think it's unreasonable at all. Like you know, fonts they are bringing it in the next version, right? So they're bringing. I think what what you said is very funny. Like it'd be very small and inconsequential thing to do. They're bringing Google fonts to, I think the next version, that's what they announced at the conference, mm -hmm. but it's not all the fonts. It's 16. And I'm like, why 16? Like <laughs> why only 16? Why not all of them? Like, <laughs> like who chose those 16 fonts? Why? Like if you're going to bring 16, let me choose which 16 fonts I want to use. Right? Like it's very, um, Ah, there's a little bit of, I don't know, there's something there. There's obviously a technical limit. There's a technical barrier and there's some sort of hurdle that they want to get around. But yeah, it's, um, it's yeah, quite tough. I, I think it's, it's, it's um, when I compare my problems when I was working with Tableau uh, to the problems I have today, like my mm -hmm. biggest problems were like the company font doesn't render 
Vel on a Safari on a certain right. type of uh, Mac, uh, and uh, it seems a bit off. Mm -hmm. Now, I have much bigger problems when it comes <laughs> to reporting. <laughs> Fonts are least of my concern. The least of your worries, yeah. <laughs> So maybe the other tools have kind of made you appreciate more what Tableau yeah, has. And so you exactly. just stopped. Yeah, I, yeah, I yeah, think yeah, yeah. that's true. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, it's true. It happens. It happens. Um, and this is why, going back to what I said earlier, I try and engage as little with other tools because then I feel like I, I start to compromise on like what is acceptable. It's a bit like cars potentially, or, you know, any, any piece of technology, once you've used it for a while and you have to go to something else, that does feel like there's a compromise and you kind of, um, you come very well wedded to to these devices, um, so it's really good. Um, the other thing I liked is that you haven't put your blog as the landing item, right? You know, for a lot of people, the blog is the landing thing. So for you, it's your portfolio first. Here's my work. Then you've got an about me page, which is sort of a deeper reflection on you, your story. Mm -hmm. And I think it's it's good you lead with your story, like you've got your background. You've touched on this already um, in this in this video, and then you got your recognition again. Just another place for people to um, to sort of see. I think the varied nature in which your work works, because I think a lot of people just think about their you know nine to five, but actually, it's all the other stuff that's super important as well, right? Yeah, yeah, and it helps build that kind of picture. I'll come back to conferences in a second because. Um, in my previous video, I asked the previous guest to ask a question for the next guest. So conferences is uh, is one of those. So I'll ask you that in a, in a second. And then mm -hmm. um, the blog, the blog is nice because I think the blog is more of a traditional blog, right? Like it's uh, it's it's kind of like its own feed. Um, it's very nicely created. Some of your portfolio items are in here as well, right? So you've got mm -hmm. the, you've kind of got the written stories to go with the visualizations, which again, I think is, you know, people try and do all of that in one place. And this, this I think is a different approach to that. And you give some of that story and narrative and context for the inspiration. So um, it's, it's really nice. I really like it. Yeah. <laughs> it's really good, you. really good, really good. Um, so yeah. Is there anything you'd improve about the website? Obviously, we've touched on a few things that you're kind of going to work on. Um, you know, now you've done this, there is always this sort of thing where in two years' time, will you still be happy with it? Probably not, and it will change, right? So is, are there anything that you can really think, all right, this is what I'm going to try and fix next? Uh, yeah, uh, it's 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 not finished. Like I still have like uh, 20 blog posts that I would like to migrate. I just didn't find the time. Yeah. Um, but I think it's like a natural thing, like, uh, at the time when I was uh, like rebanding my other, I was happy with that. Uh, and I was mm -hmm. like, uh, that's the best I could do now. Uh, mm -hmm. but I think it's natural that, uh, like, uh, people evolve and like to showcase something else currently. I don't know. Yeah. I should definitely have a contact section, which I forgot, but, uh, I'm like, it's, it's really hard to find time these days to do anything nice so yeah i, I did a a, a meta viz on my visits and uh, i think my creativity peaked at the right time like most right. of my visualizations were done during uh covid and lockdown i was nice. like home alone uh had nothing else to do so mm -hmm. it was it was the perfect time to build a portfolio and uh, spend time better than just, uh, I don't know, watching TV or agonizing. Yeah. Um, so for me, I think that was the right time. Uh, but uh, I, I hardly find time these days for extra stuff on top of my day to day work. <laughs> it is quite have... tough, right? And um, yeah. there is a little bit about that in I think this is sort of advice to let's say, you know, people who are new to the field and also new to profession, you know, both of those at the same time, which is when you're young, there's a lot of time and energy and passion that, that come, comes with all of that. And you kind of throw yourself fully, you, you throw your whole self into that sort of journey yeah. and that learning. Right. And as time goes on, naturally life moves on, uh, career changes, family uh, life, other goals, other aspirations, travel, whatever they may be, there are other things beyond 
just the thing, the thing that sort of got you started along this road. And they all compete for space and time. And I think it's very right to say that, look, yeah, there comes a time where you do deprioritize this over other things, because in many way, in many ways, we're all on the journey. And I think I always like to tell people, don't, don't feel bad that, you know, you were, you know, really pushing hard on this tableau thing and then you stopped for a while to do something else or you know if you're a tableau ambassador or whatever or if you're just part of a community or you do speaking or you do some you know training anything like that it's okay to start and stop and then come back to it or start and stop and realize yeah. it's not for you yeah i know a lot of people like feel guilty when uh, uh, they don't uh, publish a visualization for like a month <laughs> or so Right. Luckily, I never felt that I feel really grateful that I I, I was a Zen master once. Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't take it for granted. I think I spent a lot of time uh, trying to achieve this, never even dreamed of uh, this happening. But on the other hand, I'm not a Zen master or a Tableau visionary anymore. Uh, but like, I, I do travel a lot. I enjoy living working, learning a new language. Yeah. Uh, everything is just as good, <laughs> just yeah. in a in a different way. And maybe, I don't know, one day this will be my main focus again. Uh, we'll see. Uh, I never felt guilty about not publishing visits uh, or putting content out there. I don't think I will be forgotten or like lose my <laughs> career. Uh, if no, I no. Want. We'll see how it goes. Your your work is timeless. And I think I'll say this. I've always had this belief that Tableau visionaries or Zen masters, whatever they used to be called, should be a one-time thing. Because in many ways, it is, if I'm brutally honest, your work still makes you a visionary in my perspective like i've like if i go look at your portfolio and i say oh who else does stuff like this uh, the answer is no one like people get close people do similar things people can be as creative but you have your own unique style and once you've been recognized for that that is yours no one can take it away right um and so I, i've always thought it should just be a one-time thing it should be like yeah. a uh like you've achieved this level well done let's celebrate it end of discussion it's it's the repeated thing about it that i think actually creates that guilt it creates that sort of sense of um duty which is maybe un, un, unjust yeah. and yeah it can <laughs> it can make people feel a bit um if people feel like they have to justify not being it right and i think that's not a good thing because i i don't see it that way at all um yeah yeah, it's very interesting. It's very interesting dynamic. I, I have to be careful what I say because I know some people are very passionate about it and think 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 different views. But nonetheless, you're still a visionary in my eyes, whether or not you have the title, <laughs> the work. I think like show me a better portfolio and we can talk. Um, uh, from a, from from a visionary and we can talk because I yeah you, you you've done some incredible work here. Um, if I come back to um the question I was going to ask you, so this was this is a question about uh conferences and uh, stuff have you been to tableau conferences in the past I, I think you have been but like which ones have you have you attended which ones were sort of the ones that um uh you know stood out to you no i never go you've never been <laughs> like, interesting uh, so I, not even I, like I'm... a local not even like a local conference in in your region uh, Official Tableau conferences I never been to. Uh, let's right. not count uh, the online. Uh, yeah, no, those don't like, count. Those don't count. Um, yeah. I used to event uh, tag events uh, when yes. I was still living in Budapest because uh, it was like our company or Yvette, uh, a fellow yeah, uh, yeah, Tableau yeah, practitioner yeah. <laughs> uh, who, who organized them. And they were really good. Uh, that was a really good community. And the yeah. only bigger event uh, I attended was uh, the uh, the Visit Berlin uh, conference this year. Yeah. And yeah. maybe I'm going to London this year. Yeah, <laughs> amazing. If you can make London, that'd be great. I'll be there. So it'd be nice to meet you in person um, as well. There. I think it's, 
conferences are a bit difficult to justify if i'm honest like the let, let yeah. me be let me be clear to to everyone i'm not saying everyone has to go to conference because for many people it's their work that's going to support them to go to conference and then for their work to justify the expense and time is quite a big hurdle yes sometimes you get discounts but no one has the flexibility to say book their tableau conference seven months in advance sometimes budgets don't work like that so I totally accept that it is in some cases a privilege, right? You have to have a company that's really supportive, yeah. has a real passion in Tableau. And then on top of that, has the budget to spend sometimes $3,000 on one individual to go to a conference when in actual fact, you know, $3,000 can buy 10 people yearly access to Udemy. And the company thinks about it for one second and goes, here's, here's, here's yearly access to Udemy instead for 10 people, right? Because like, they just, yeah. the budgets go further. So, it can be tough. Um, and a lot of people who talk very valiantly about conference have that support, have that coverage, and they find it very easy to be able to justify that. So I, I never want to make people feel bad for not going to conference. Yeah. Hard. I mean, yeah. Uh, if I ever got a, like a free ticket to, to a Tableau conference to travel to the US, uh, don't mm -hmm. have to take any holidays, everything is paid for. I would never thought about that, but for me, it was yeah. never the case. Like none yeah. of my companies would have financed uh, yeah. the tickets going there. Uh, yeah. It would have been my own holiday. So that was, yeah. uh, th this is why I never went, but not because like, I don't want to. Um, yeah. The opportunity doesn't, doesn't quite <laughs> fit. And I think it's important to explain that to people, but um, if you can make Europe or London, um, be amazing uh we will yeah. find we'll host you we'll we'll do some fun stuff <laughs> uh, i'm sure so many people are thinking about it and i'm i'm quite excited i feel like this is the actual conference to go to now like um i know a lot of people didn't go to the american conference just passed so this might be a great opportunity to kind of have a second yeah. wind this year so i will try to go it's already in the talks so <laughs> Good. If if we can help in any way, if you're watching this and you're you're debating whether Judith should go to conference or not, Tableau Tim says she should. Uh, <laughs> I don't know if that helps it at all. If if not, I um, apologize. But yeah, um, no, I think uh, you'd be you'd be very much welcomed um, at conference. So yeah, I guess before we finish off, let me uh, let me do this one thing. Let me come off screen sharing. Yeah. So yeah, before we finish off, I guess, do you, do you have any sort of, uh, final, final remarks, anything you'd like to, to, to sort of share to people? I think one thing I always like to do is I get the guest to ask a question for the next guest. So the question mm -hmm. you answered was about conference. Um, I'm going to ask you to ask the next person a question. You don't know who the person will be, but you'll okay. find out at some point in the future. I borrowed this from Stephen Bartlett. It's very, uh, it's very much his thing. He gets them to write in his diary a question for the next one. So, yeah, if there's a question, you, you, it can be about Tableau. It can be about anything data related, I guess. Um, anything about the industry it doesn't have to be Tableau. What would you ask someone? But chances are that uh, the next person who will be the guest would be working in tableau or data visualization yeah, right? yeah yeah highly likely highly likely yeah yeah okay then i think my question would be like uh, what project would you do if you don't have like any obstacles you could get all the right. data you want uh, right. there are no like design <laughs> aspects uh, yeah. uh, that limit uh, your uh, creative energies what would be yeah. the project that's an amazing question. That is like, yeah, that, <laughs> that is a very good question because I think everyone dreams up of these like monumental like opportunities to just bring together either data sets they've not had a chance to work with or use a capability they've not had a chance to work with. Right. That's, li that's literally it. Like, I think for me, if I was to answer this question, it would be around quantified self um, like personal data. So if I could get all my data from every single company that has my data and I had no limit to the amount of storage, database, whatever, the ultimate project would be to put it all into a database, clean it and build 
like the ultimate like quantified self narrative of like my life over a period of time i think it has to be focused on events but you want to be able to sort of focus in on specific things but having that data model to do that would be i think the most interesting thing for me um i find business data or just anything other than my own data quite challenging to to not to understand but to have a connection with because it's always about something else it's not something that i've had an input into and created so fast moving consumer goods loved it super passionate i could go to the shop and pick stuff off the shelf and be like oh look at that my transactions in there but no um my own personal data i know exactly the narratives i know all the stories i know all of that so that would be my but anyway um, i think it would be similar for me as well like uh you know when you are just uh walking about uh around town doing your stuff yeah. and someone takes a picture uh yeah. because they are tourists i i yes. want to have a visualization about all those people's pictures <laughs> i'm in uh but that don't i don't know, know. Yeah. like yeah maybe i don't know there's a a picture on the walls of a i don't know chinese family uh and i'm yeah. in the background uh yeah. on the wall yeah. like it would be super <laughs> interesting to know that is that is a great god i hadn't thought of that yeah that is a very good one i have to say i could tell you've got a very creative mind you're not very like um <laughs> you, yeah you, you you're not sort of hindered by like past experience you have a very open expanse of how you think about questions I, that's a great suggestion like and there must be hundreds like thousands because yeah we all take photos i mean i i look at my photos how many random people are in them are there even some people that are random that have been spotted twice in my photos i've actually had that face recognition <laughs> pulls up this person twice and i'm like but i was in two completely different places and it's the same person like, like how weird is that um you know, you bump into your life partners. How many times did you meet your life partner before yeah. you actually met them, right? Like that's another wild, like visualization I'd love to do. Like what was the closest I got to my wife before I met her for the first time? Yeah. Right? That's a great, that's a great like little um, piece of, yeah. We'll never know. Maybe we will. Who knows? AI is on the way, right? <laughs> Yeah. Thankfully, I think back in the day, data wasn't collected that well. So maybe we're okay for that. But yeah. Yeah. Listen, thank you so much for your time. It's been, it's been incredible. Thank you for sharing your sort of thoughts about your portfolio. Um, you've made me think about so many like great things I'm <laughs> going to have to go away and think about as well now, which is, which is great. But in specifically your portfolio, I think it's amazing. Um, I think it gives lots of people an opportunity and a framework to think about people who are starting in the field maybe gives them a framework to say hey i don't just have to go and post everything to linkedin i don't have to just go and do it on x i can build my own space to go and do that and i curate that story i create that narrative and for 12 dollars or 15 dollars, i can get someone in etsy to do an amazing illustration that's better than anything AI would have done for the same price, yeah. actually. AI services around that much <laughs> per month, right? <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Good stuff. Uh, thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it. Thank you, too. And you could witness, like, under an hour how Berlin went from summer to winter. <laughs> I was about to say, like, <laughs> it's like, just gone completely dark. Completely dark. Like, there's... <laughs> nothing out there like i can see um <laughs> i thought the lights had gone out in your room or there's a power no, or something no it's dead dark like uh maybe the <laughs> apocalypse is coming and uh, it's useless to talk about future uh data with projects <laughs>